I don't think I showed you this footage before, and if I did, I apologize, but I came across this the other day and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about this. So this is a uh, Vanderhall Venice car that you could buy, somewhere around 30 grand. They got different models higher too. And it has a turbo four cylinder, uh, about 195 horsepower. And uh, it was pretty fun, uh, you know, taking it for a little spin. Uh, but what was crazy about it is you could really hear the turbos like it was in the passenger's floor area. I mean, it was just really like a plunger going back and forth, which, you know, I've heard turbos before whining, but I've never heard it like a plunger before. So check this out. Alright, so we got a plate, a muffler is pretty much dialed in and aligned, and plate number two. So I went to the alignment shop and I was like, you know, if you have this thing on the lift, hopefully um, you could actually adjust my springs. Now the shocks are just buried in the frame. You got the horns down there, you got the grill. I mean, you just really can't get to them. But there is a little hole right there that maybe, you know, when this thing's on a lift, you could get your hand up in there and adjust the shocks and adjust the ride height. And of course you want to do that before it's aligned. But the shop was like, yeah, why don't you do this yourself? And come back and even though they specialize in custom cars and stuff they're like you don't want to pay us six hours to deal with this you you deal with it you know so talking to my buddy Seth he brought up that there's a separate hole here and uh, so that was a half an hour switch over and shockingly enough that actually gave me an inch and three quarters lift in the front which it's freaking amazing because I was expecting like three quarters of an inch only. And so that now gives me a decent amount of clearance and uh, I'm really happy about that. Now, the other thing is, you know, we're starting to actually put some, some miles on this and I've been just kind of driving around with my battery sitting there. And now that I want to like, you know, hit the gas and slam on the brakes and all that kind of stuff, uh, it's time to actually cinch this thing down. So that is what I'm going to do this morning and get that locked in. So I feel like uh, I don't have a boat anchor that's going to get ripped out of the car as I'm doing diff different things. So we're going to try to do that today and then hopefully go for a little ride and see what happens.
So while I was at the shop, we had the car up on the lift and it was a perfect time for me to actually take some photos since I'm never gonna get this good of a view, uh, you know, only a foot and a half off the ground. So today I'm gonna to be doing some brake biasing and basically what I have to do is remove the dash so I have access to the uh, brake system and then you know go a decent uh, speed and then slam on the brakes and see which if the backs lock up first or the fronts lock up first and every time I do that then go adjust the brakes and then go give it another try and see if I can get it to where either all four are braking at the same time or skidding at the same time and we're you know we're not looking to do a major skid we're just looking to see what locks up first and then bias against that So as you can see, you guessed it, one of my neighbors actually called the cops on me. Now, I've never had the cops called on me in my entire life. That I remember, like, not at all. I'm not a super crazy driver or anything like that. And so as the cops driving by, like, I just, you know, went, went on and did my business, drove around, biased my brakes a little bit more in the other neighborhoods. And then I came back around, and it just so happened as I was coming back and pulling into my street to actually, you know, 50 feet away from my driveway, the cop was pulling into my street also. So I think like when I originally was driving out and I saw him, he was actually going to like field the complaint, if you will, with the neighbor. And uh, and I know which neighbor it is, and the cop actually told me who it was too. Uh, because I waved to him and he didn't wave back. And I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> so, and what's crazy is he told the cops, the cop comes up to me and he's like, yeah, so your uh, neighbor's uh, complaining that you've been popping wheelies and endangering the children in the neighborhood. And I'm like, popping wheelies? Are you freaking kidding me? I was like laughing out loud. I'm like, this can't pop wheelies. I was, <laughs> I was just like, what? I was like, I was doing the exact opposite. I was biasing my brakes, which means I was driving about 25 miles per hour and then slamming on my brakes to see which tires locked up. And he's like, you know, and he's like rolling his eyes at what the neighbor said, you know. I was like, you'd have to have a drag car with 2,000 horsepower on, you know, with nitrous on the freaking drag strip with locked up tires to try to get a wheelie. I was like, this, this is a show car, man. This doesn't do that. I was like, I just spent two years in this garage building this car. And he was like all impressed, dude. He was just like, whoa, yeah, check it out. It's pretty nice. So, uh, so yeah, so here's the funny thing. 
that neighbor was standing 40 feet away from my other neighbors that were spotting me, spotting the neighborhood and spotting my wheels to see which ones were locking up or not, because sometimes you can't tell yourself. And uh, like he couldn't just walk over and say, hey, what are you guys doing here? You know, I think it's a little much. And it's like, no, call the cops. So just wait until that next homeowners association meeting. You're screwed. So, you know, I don't mind if someone wants to come over and say, hey, you know, cut it out or whatever. And that, that's fine. That doesn't bother me. But and, you know, I guess if you don't want to be confrontational and you go to the cops, that's fine, too. But when you freaking lie and say I'm popping wheelies and endangering all the children that are playing in the streets, which there's none because it's 105 degrees out, which means it's 140 on the freaking pavement. Like, what a joke. So. In any case, all, you know, for these last two years, I've been saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm right in the middle of the city. I got, you know, these are all major streets around me. Like, I got nowhere to go testing and stuff like that. And sure enough, the first real testing I do, bam, you know, so is what it is. But I've always been aware of that. And, uh, of course, I didn't get a ticket or a warning or anything, you know. So uh, the cop knew it was a total BS statement, so... Uh, so that's about it, but uh, we're, we're getting there. I'm starting to feel safe. I got, you know, the seat belts. I got the gauges working. I got the brakes bias. And, you know, I, I'll honestly say I've got like 40 miles on the car and I've been kind of scared because I haven't had that much brake on the road, like a block before the red light. I'm slowing down and like, you know, just to make sure I could stop because this thing wants to go. And uh, so now I feel a lot better. I feel a lot safer and I feel that I can, you know, start actually seeing what the car can do. And, uh, and I'm gonna do that, just not in my neighborhood. Talk to you guys later, have a great day.